success. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's RTC TV4 matchup, coming to you live from the Comet Crater, where your cast and comets are hosting the Cross County Rivals, the Pioneer Panthers. I'm Blair Zimmerman, joined on the other headset by Gage Thomas. Gage, welcome back up here. Thank you. It's going to be hopefully a good night for some Comet football. We got a bit of a sprinkle for our broadcast today, but nonetheless, I do think we're going to see some pretty good football taking place here tonight. I think so. I did uh, take a look at the um, oh, with the John Harrell kind of preview, and uh, Gavin Molenkoff to kick this one away. Down at the 28-yard line. Welcome back, folks. And a swarm tackle by the Comets to the 31 yard line. In their own territory to start. Number 17, Tyler Keller's on the return. We'll have to see if the Comets can try to be out of this world. The Panthers will be on the prowl. Tackle by number 82. For defense. So we'll come on. Four defensive linemen, four linebackers, and have three uh, defensive backs. First offensive drive here for the Pacers, for the Panthers, excuse me. That's not even the right sport, yeah. Yeah. Gav Gage, wow. Okay, well, there's mine. Gain of five on the play by the Panthers. The run game has really came through as a big part of their offense this season. Proves dividend with a gain of five there on the first play of the game. It's a nice little run play to the outside. Gets him halfway to the marker. You know, and the, the rain that we've had roll through here since about uh, 4.30, it definitely uh, will have an impact, I think, on footing for this ground game. Yeah, absolutely. Probably not going to see a whole bunch of passes, probably leaning more towards the run game to avoid slips and potential interceptions. Pioneers, Pioneer Panthers get around a gain of 10. <laughs> the freshman Gage Manier with that stop. Ball on the 50 yard line. Handoff on Outside handoff. Comments to get there. Great swarming tackle by a whole crew of Comets there to bring up a second and ten. Like they probably want to in this offense. Second and ten here for the Panthers. We've seen nothing but runs to start the game. Quarterback handoff, pitches it back to the running back and a gain of around six, six or seven yards. It's a good read there by the Panthers to pick up a bunch of extra yards that possibly could have been blown up if the quarterback hadn't pitched it back. They're running it, and they got the first down. Gain of around 10 there, so a first down for the Panthers on that third down conversion. That's the first of the game and a first down for the Panthers. Ball will be spotted on the Comets 33 yard line. <coughs> Second run of 10-plus yards on this drive for Toloza. And Rand's going to keep it, space up the middle, 10 yards, and then some Rand's. the tackle, heading towards the goal line and stop short. Wow, stopped just on the other side of that five-yard line. Great job by Rand to keep his footing, be able to pick up a bunch of extra yarders there, and they have their first red zone appearance of the night. Up, it was kind of an up high, up chest tackle, and Rand's able to keep his feet and keep moving, spin around, and 
get inside, get to the 10 yard line. Get First and 10 ball. from the red zone. Hand off, and they're going to get into the end zone for six. Touchdown, Pioneer. So the Pioneer Panthers' first offensive possession of the game. Game goes for six points with 9.25 left here in this first quarter of play. Yeah, certainly not with the comments were, how the comments were looking to open up with uh, letting the Panthers into the end zone in under three minutes. Panthers will be going for a PAT conversion here. That one is up and good. Boy, I would have bet anything that that was short. Good thing I didn't put any money on it, huh? <laughs> well, after uh, two and a half minutes, it's Pioneer 7, Casting 0. We're going to come back after this word from our sponsors. You're watching Comets and Panthers football here on RTC TV. Uh -huh. It's an interesting setup on the cast and sideline because it's very close to the, uh, the bleachers. It is very close to the bleachers, no question about it. Also, we have the lines painted on the field for the soccer team. Kick it off for the Panthers, number two, Rams. So on the 40-yard line, Rams hand up. Pioneer to send this one away. High flyer, and it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. That was a good plan there by the Comets receivers. Weren't able to get under it, so just let it roll to a touchback. Absolutely good call there by Jabez Yarber to just let that one roll into the end zone. The Comets will start here on the 20-yard line. 80 yards to the end zone, first and play. First and 10, excuse me. Grant Yaden in the backfield. He's going to run it. Gets wrapped up by a whole host of Panthers. Gain of two there. On the play, so it'll be second and eight. Number 21, Brett Gaten, the ball carrier. Tackle by play. number 56. Good defense. By the Panthers on that one. So second and eight on their own. One to two yard long. Up coming for the Comets. Comets great. Comets, of course, on the road for the last two weeks. Uh, something that they struggled with the last time they were at home was clock management in that first half. Ooh, and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Comets lose two there on the play, so third and ten. See if they can pick up the first down here and hopefully move the chains. <laughs> Grant Yaden again taking it. Yeah, there's a flag out there. False start against the Comets. So it'll be a loss of five on the play. It'll be third and 15 here for this Comets crew. Grant Yaden going to keep it. And he's going to get stopped short. Gain of one on the play. So it'll be fourth and 14. Most likely going to be a punt here for the Comets. I really don't see that they have any options there. Yeah, absolutely. Field position will play a big one. Uh, 
will play a big factor in this game today, not only um, with a good team of the Panthers, but also with the rain conditions. You don't want to be able to shorten the field and then just lose six more right there. So the Comets will send this one away. Short, high arcing kick that's going to bounce back. That short punt still going to leave the Panthers well into Comets territory. So Gage, maybe you know something from the holes that I hadn't heard. Why, why is Grant in the backfield instead of Gavin? I haven't heard of anything. It might be a new um, offensive strategy. Comet's trying to come up with to hopefully get some points on the board, but I haven't heard anything about it. No one said any, anything to me in the hallway, so it really was a big surprise seeing Grant Yaden there under center for the first offensive drive for the Comets. Decent stop there from the Comets. Only giving up a couple of yards. Quarterback keeper here by the Panthers and Rand's going to be brought down a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Ball did pop out, but Rand's knee was down. So Panthers will in fact re retain possession here on third and nine. Third and nine, handoff, and a clutch tackle there by Grant Yaden to bring him down before he picks up the first down. Good stop there by Yaden. We'll see if the Panthers go for it or attempt a three here. Tackle by number 21, Grant Yaden. I think you've got to consider going for it. I think, I think if Coach Adam Barry's going to go for it. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Fourth and four. They're just outside of the red zone. Well in the Comets territory. Go for it, right? Absolutely, yeah. Not quite close enough to kick a three-pointer here, especially with the wind conditions. They're going to do a handoff. The Comets miss a tackle. And there's a first down. A cut back down at around nearly, the six. Wow, nearly into the end zone. Three. All, it, all it takes is one missed pass and the situation changes. Yeah, absolutely. You had three Comets there that possibly could have made um, an impact on that play, bringing them down short of the first down marker. But great work there by that Panthers offensive line to bring up uh, another red zone opportunity here for the Panthers in this first quarter. Yeah, Panthers now first and goal, six to go. Another handoff cutting it inside. They're going to be short, but nonetheless a gain around three. Second down and three upcoming for this Panthers offense. You can expect another run here, especially with their downs position and just how well they've run the ball to start. Fantastic blocking there by the Panthers offensive line to get another six on the board. Looks like we might see the extra point attempt again from range. We'll see if he gets up on it this time. The Panthers are again going for a one-point conversion here after the touchdown. First one was good, just barely got over the crossbar. So they're going to go ahead and attempt it again. This one is well over the crossbar. That one split the uprights and it'll drop for one. So, to, for, so the Comets are down by 14 early here. See if they can bounce back after their first offensive drive. 
Well, we will swing back after we stop out and thank our sponsors. You're watching Comets and Panthers football here on RTZ TV. Good Another. kick there by Rands and a receiving catch by Yarber. Comets yep. have blockers up the field. Yarber trying to conduct his blockers. That was a great return by Yarber, making something out of nothing. You thought he was about to get tackled around the 30-yard line, but it would just prolong the play and get, pick up an extra 15 yards. So he would be down at the Comets 45-yard line. That is tremendous starting field position for this Comets team. Best field position the Comets have seen yet tonight. And uh, Yarber really, you can tell how slick that field is. He was really, he made great gains for how much he was watching his footing. Bolenkoff now back under center, hands off to Kyle Rauta, but she's going to cut back up the field for a gain of around 11 yards. Excuse me, he will be short, did run out of bounds there. Second and short here for this Comets offense. So Grant Yaden no longer under center for this Comets offense. Gavin Molenkoff, who's the traditional quarterback, is back in that position. And first play goes for positive yardage. So again, Mollenkopf under center. They do have Edson out wide. It's another handoff to the freshman Landon Rigney. Able to pick up a yard or two. I remember a dude talking with quarterback Gavin Mollenkopf. Um, in the hallways a couple days ago, they said that they're really trying to get more plays when they're under center besides of when they're in the gun. He said that um, when they were in the gun, they just they were too predictable with knowing that they were going to run the ball. So now being under center really does give them um, options for a play action and a pass. And just when you're under center, just a lot more plays in your playbook open up. So another handoff here to Routabush. Routabush taken down by a shoelaces. Looks like the ball on the 48, and they are going to mark that short. Fourth and one here. This is a big play for the Comets to keep these chains moving. See if they can get it here on fourth and short. Looks almost like fourth and inches with how close those chains are together. Molenkoff going to keep it. He's going to get a first down. Gets enough, goes to the ground before getting plastered. Good play there. Yeah, absolutely. He saw those defensive ends coming in, um, circling around him, trying to contain them, and he decides to pull it down, runs for around three or four yards, and picks up the first down. So great um, improv there by Gavin Molenkoff to be able to get another series for this Comets offense. Molenkoff, another handoff, this one to Yarber. See Yarber fight for extra yardage there. Wrapped up and brought down at about the 43. Once again, I like to point out that the Comets, once again, are doing tremendous job with their clock management. They haven't even uh, gotten close to getting called for any delay of game, so... Kudos to the comments there, getting their pace of play figured out later in this season. Landon Rigney, the freshman, and he's going to get tackled way behind the chains. Loss of around seven or eight yards. Once again, that wet field just makes getting around defenders and cornerbacks a whole lot tougher. You saw uh, no chance to even get out of the situation he was in, we're gonna have a third and long. Yeah, knowing knowing the agility and speed that Rigney had, I think that on a dry field, he would have been able to find a way to juke and make that work, but lost his feet out from under him, and then the defenders were on him. Molenkoff in the gun for the first time tonight. He's gonna hand it off to Yarber. He's got blockers way up the field. Yarber fighting for extra yardage, and that is a way to get it done on third down. Way into those chains, not quite enough to move them. 
Looks like they are oh, enough. There we go. How about that? You saw when Gavin Molenkoff stepped back in the gun, the Pioneer Panthers completely changed their defensive layout, and they they thought that Gavin Molenkoff was going to go ahead and throw that ball, but he just handed it off to Yarber. How about that for a third down pickup? Great read of the field there by the freshman. Yarber, another juke. He's cutting up the field. He's going. Cuts back. And he's oh. tackled inside the 10. Big first down there for Yarber. Absolutely. He's been navigating those blockers all day. You saw it on the kickoff return. And once again right there, he's, have, he's having an incredible drive here for this Comets offense. And they're going to see their first red zone opportunity of the night. Gotta be that's not, that is not good. Comets have three receivers out wide here. Gavin Molenkoff in the gun. He's going to hand it right back to Yarber. He slips, though. Once again, that wet field coming into play. Under a minute left on the play clock for the first quarter. Yep, got about one more play that they have to run here before their first timeout. Excuse me. Uh, quarter. <clears throat> Second and five here. Molenkoff again from the gun. He's going to pass. Throws it out wide. Big, big overage on that one. Absolutely. If you don't, if your receiver can't get it, you just want to make sure that one goes out of bounds. And Gavin Molenkoff put that in place that the receivers. Uh, Excuse me, that the cornerbacks could not get that one. So, on Gavin Molenkoff's part, that was a good miss. Third and five upcoming here for this Comets offense. You can almost expect that they're going to try to go for this on fourth down if they don't pick this one up here. One game has been working for the Comets. I wouldn't be surprised if they try another one here. There's Yarber. He's going to lose some yardage on that one. And that's basically going to wrap up this first quarter here. At the end of one, Pioneer 14, Caston 0. We'll come back with uh, Caston at fourth and goal. You're watching Comets and Panthers football here on RTC TV4. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready to start the second. Comet sitting fourth and goal. Looks like about eight to go. This is a huge play here for this Comet's offense. Fourth and eight. See if they can pick it up. We're going to do a handoff to Routabush, and he is going to be stopped short. Well, you got to applaud the Pioneer defense there. They, uh, the Comets had four tries most of which were inside five yards. Pioneer able to stop them. Going to pick up possession way down on their own. It's like six yard line. Might be a great opportunity for Comet's defensive line to uh, push hard and pick up a safety. Absolutely. If the Comets didn't get anything out of that drive, they can at least rely. They can at least say that they put the Panthers in some pretty rough field position to start. Second and five here for the Panthers. That's a handoff up the left side. Tackle by Gavin Molenkoff, and that will be enough to move the chains. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the big play to happen. I think I, mean, I feel like something's coming here at some point or another. Pioneer, they've been eating up these chunks of yards, but they broke through. I almost played as 20, but I feel like I have a feeling like there's a big play coming here at some point. Or Pioneer here on a first and 10 outside handoff here. Oh, nearly. Good tackling there by the Comets. He nearly spun off. A, Kind of did shake off that first tackle. Uh, brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Absolutely good heads up play there by Grant Gaden to be able to uh, bring the Panthers down the backfield. 
So second and 11 here. Blockers, but you don't want to power yourself right into them. That's for sure. So second and eleven on the roll, rumbling to about the twenty-four yard line is from Loza. It's a six. Number fifteen. About six yards picked up on that one. Be a third and five. Third down play, big hole, and that's going to be enough to move the chains and then some. Good running there by the Panthers. His leg just kept on churning and able to get well past those first down markers. Pioneer under center here, outside handoff, and Levi Martin, what a play. Big sack there for Martin. Absolutely, he got out quick and able to make that tackle. That's one of those things about these jet sweeps is if those cornerbacks and those defensive ends don't pop out, you can almost guarantee you can take that for some yardage, but if that defensive end can read it well, then you're going to be met in the backfield. Great heads up to play there by Martin to read that correctly and able to bring him down. Something, something's just not adding up on that when Caden Hill carries the ball. They have to be telegraphing it somehow because they are blowing it up every time. Hill is in motion. This time Another handoff here. This one was a counter. Gain of around three or four yards. Third and 11 for this Panthers team. Be a big play if the Comets can mount a stop here on this third down and leave Pioneer with the decision to make. Panthers once again under center on this third down. Running game's worked well and they have a pitch play. And that is a obvious hold and the flag finally comes out. That one, we can almost guarantee, will get called back. There was a pretty obvious hold, to say the least. Yep, easy call there for the officials to make there. They'll bring that one back and replay a third down. That was the big play I was talking about. That's just coming back, though. Now they're going to run it back. And so it'll be from the 34. They're going to be all the way back to 24. So a 10 yard penalty there on third. So we'll have a third down and 21 for this Panthers offense. Collins have a golden opportunity here to make a stand here on third down. But I'll tell you what, Gage, if the Panthers run a successful play that looks like that last one, that 21 yards is, will be eaten up in a hurry. So hopefully the defense brings their A game They're back for the for first pass. pass of the game. That one just over the shoulder. Great drop there by the Panthers, but just not able to convert. Pass was a little bit out. out front. Fourth and 21. Surely they're going to bring out the punt team on this. Looks like it. Good play design there by the Panthers on that third down play, but... Pass just a little off target. Out towards the sideline, we'll have Jabez Yarber to receive this punt. And they're going to, oh, it's a rugby punt. Hits a Comet. 
heads up play there. Khan wants to dive on it. Don't see those every day. Those are called rugby punts. When the punter takes a quick look at the field, decides whether he, if he should try to go for it on fourth or to punt it away. That one just went off the toe of the foot, so went about 10 yards, bounced off a comet. I believe that was Gage Muneer. He was able to fall on it, so good heads up play there by the freshman. It basically just ended up at the end of the first down chains. So the Comets will take possession just inside of Panthers territory. Another run here by Yarber. He's going to be met at the line. Excuse me, gain a one, second and ten here. Second and nine. I mean, on the, on the one hand, a yard's a yard. On the other hand, you need more than a yard every, every down if you're going to move those chains. Absolutely. If you're going to try to use all your downs, you want to look at a gain of either three or four yards per play. See where to pick them up on third down. Comets have gone all runs here ex except for one pass that was unfortunately off target towards the end zone. Molenkoff back to pass here. He's going to go deep. And that one is Ooh, bounced that off the helmet. Nearly picked off. Gavin Molenkoff caught a huge break there. The cornerback seemingly had it in his bread basket, hits off his helmet and out of bounds. Big break there, big break there by the Comets. So third and nine here. Thomas did have a relatively open look there, just a tad long there. Handoff there by Yarber. He's going to cut up field, but not for much. <laughs> Yarber swears his knee didn't hit the ground. He just kept on running. I was kind of on the side of, uh, he kind of sat, he was sitting on the defensive. The, the yeah, I, I have to say there, I think that I agree with Yarber. When, when he was on the ground, his feet were in the air. His body was on top of the defender. Screen pass here by the Comets and a first down will be made. You don't see those every day, especially in this Comets playbook. Screen passes are not common here, but great execution by this offensive line to be able to pick up that first. That's be good for a first down Boy, they're calling that just a barely a first down, too. I don't know, the official drug him forward a little bit. Here we go, first down for the Comets. Half of the second back to quarter, throw again. gone. Molenkoff's hand was hit there, was trying to get it out and was able, was not able to connect with Grant Yaden. That's one of the passes I see uh, the Comets go for again and again as he's out as these out routes toward the sidelines, they usually are relatively open, but not that one there. Yeah, sometimes it is. It's kind of jersey gets folded up, and so sometimes it kind of hides the number. So all good, though. All good, though. Second and ten here for Molenkoff from the gun. That's uh, not why I'm here. <laughs> no. Molenkoff, bow gets blown up, and he does. Big tackle now. Comments at... Third and looks like 22. Molenkoff fortunate to just hold on to that football. That ball started rattling there, but he was able to hold on. So we got third down and a parking lot to cover here. Well, maybe I can't count. 
Maybe that's 17. It's a lot of yards. Grant Yaden, once again, back in the quarterback position. They're going to do a handoff here to Yaden, blocking upfield by Routabush. And, and he's he loses slip. his footing. And these conditions are making it hard for both teams to get something going in the ground game here. So we got fourth and long. Still 12 to go. I'd say that the Comets have to kick it away. They might keep this one here. Yeah, uh, Coach Roark will call a timeout here, so the Comets will discuss this one. All right, well, we'll be back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That cast and timeout has just finalized. Play clock is running. Five minutes left in the half. Grant okay. Yaden, he's going to do a fake handoff reverse. Landon Rigney cuts up the field, but he's going to be well short. Good effort there by Rigney. And creative play design there, but just not enough to move those chains. Well, I hate to disagree. It did move the change, just not the way the Comets fans want. But still, uh, improved on their defensive field position. Uh, either way, that was a good call as we were off air when you said that they were going to go for it. Definitely, definitely read the field. And uh, I think aggressive was the right play there. Absolutely. Even if you do try to kick it, it's not like you're going to put them back super deep. So um, good aggressive play for the Comets to go for it. Several great uh, tackle breaks there. I like to always think of it as like fourth down ter territory in high school. If you're between the 40 and 30 and it's, it's fourth down, you, you don't really have the um, length to punt it, but at the same time, you don't want to lose up on good field position, so go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Thomas did right there, but just not able to pick it up. Second and six here. Another handoff by the Panthers. Breaks the tackle and a first down is made. Brought down about the 39. And that's kind of what we were talking about in that last Comet series. You don't have to get a lot. Between four and six yards of play. Keep those chains moving and you'll find your way to the end zone. Absolutely. Keeping momentum rolling is a big thing in football. Who has the momentum right now? It's been the Panthers and they've, as a result, been up on the scoreboard and they're, they have the possession of the football right now. Quarterback keeper. Just about to gain a three there. Pioneer. So far for Pioneer. It's not really been Rands or it's only been it's really been Tolosa. Tolosa's a show for Pioneer so far. And you hope others get involved because it, as you play better teams, you're kind of telegraphing. You kind of telegraph stuff. As it's like, okay, we know we gotta stop this player, but have the multiple weapons would be huge for Pioneer. Adding some depth would definitely help this one. We got a pitch handoff here and Grant Yaden, how about that tackle? Loss of about a yard there. Seemingly came out of nowhere, covered half the field and brought him down for a loss. Third down, nine hashes still the other chain. Panthers on their own 40. Just outside the two minute warning in this half. Quarterback out wide. Gage Manier. How about that? But a 130 pound freshman, Manier, able to hold on and bring him down. Brought him down two yards short, moving those chains. 
He's a great wrestler too, Cage Manier. Great wrestler, and he's able to hold on there and bring him down. I imagine it's all the grip strength he's gotten from wrestling all these years. Pioneer under center here on this fourth down attempt, and they're going to keep it. They'll get it. And more. Gain of round six. Great fake out there by that Panthers offense. Comets defense bought it lock, stock, and barrel. Panthers able to move the chains. Absolutely, the Panthers are not looking for too much, just just uh, hoping to move the chains, and they do a terrific job there, picking up more than enough. And they got another first and ten. Oh, he might go all the way. I think he will. Big play there by Toloza. 46-yard touchdown run right up the middle there by the Panthers. So right before we are going to go into halftime, we're going to have a Panthers score. It looks like another PAT attempt. Starting to rain a bit harder here. Well, spare a thought for Carson up on the up on the roof. That one is good. 4-1, so Panthers 3-for-3 three three on PAT attempts. You don't see that with every high school team. 115 left in the half. Comets lining up. Receive a kickoff. What we need here, Gage, is a big kickoff return just all the way into the end zone. Absolutely. Comets have to find a spark. Hopefully can try to punch in 6 before we go to halftime, and they're just going to do a standard squib here. And here we got Levi Martin. And that wet field once again taking its toll on the play. So Collins, one minute, 11 seconds to try to punch it in for six here. be interesting to see how the Comets will attack this one. Will they go pass or run? They're going to go a screen here. That one just goes nowhere. Well, that was a completed pass, but it left him at second and 11. Under a minute left on the play clock. Or excuse me, the game clock. Obviously, it's under a minute on the play clock. <laughs> Molenkoff, again, a screen. Cuts up field. Ball comes out, but out of bounds. So it looks like we're going to be third and five. Third and five, 32 seconds remaining in this first half of play. Molenkoff, again, screen, but this time it's the other way. Grant Yaden cuts up. Grant That's Yaden enough to gets move the first. chains. You can expect a timeout here, and looks like that will be the case. So Kasten picking up pot as of yardage here. All right, well, good use of a timeout there. 26.2 left on the game clock for the half. We'll be back after a few words from our sponsors to see how this half shakes out. You're watching Comets Panthers football here on RTC TV. About 55 yards to cover by the time we're back in the pocket. How do you think this is going to go, Gage? Absolutely. If the Comets are going to try to play this one aggressively, you can expect a lot of quick passes. Um... But we got Grant Yaden back here, so expect a run. And we got a flag on this play. And already calling, that's a false start on the Comets. 
Well, that absolutely uh, changes the face of their plan. They'll be backed up by five first and 15. So it does depend here. If the Comets want to try to punch in six and play it aggressive, you can expect quick pass, quick pass, and then another quick pass trying to get into the end zone. But if they're going to play it conservative here, um, just expect some runs or a knee to go in the half. Coach Ulrich does have one timeout remaining to stop the clock. Grant Yaden in the Wildcat formation. A double handoff, and that's Routabush cutting up the field. That's going to move the chains. He's trying now to get, out, get out, of out of bounds, and he did. Great play, great read. 16.7 now left. And there's a Comet down at the line of scrimmage. Looks like Levi Martin. Great blocking there by the Comets to uh, get Kyle Radebush out the field and a first down marker to the first down marker. But right now, our attention is at the former line of scrimmage with Levi Martin. Hopefully he can get up and be okay. Well, as little as I want to wish it on anybody, I'm going to say hopefully just a cramp. So, you know, we are, we are now nearly 24 minutes into play in spite of the water in the air. These guys have been sweating it out. For the comments here on this next first and ten, I think you would be kind of kicking yourself if you wouldn't try to go for the end zone, take three or four shots trying to get in. Absolutely. Again, Coach Ulrich has one more clock stop that he controls. And that was just great presence of mind by Routabush to fight his way to the, uh, to the sideline after breaking the chains. And looks like Martin is up. He's hobbling a bit. Well, in the bet, that is a pretty nasty leg cramp. <laughs> Coach Ulrich yelling at the uh, would-be offensive line that's getting ready to pick up a penalty for an extra man on the field. Spec the pass here. Back to Grant Yaden, though. Grant Yaden, a stiff arm, cutting up the field and out of bounds. He's going to put some yards on it and stop the clock. Unfortunately, he did burn a third of their time looking for an opening. Picked off about six yards, though. Gavin yeah, Molenkoff's getting a play here from Coach Orwick. You can expect a pass here on this next play. We've seen these out routes for Kasson work in the past, these post routes. So let's see if they can dial up one here and hopefully put six on the board for half. Just the comment side of the Panthers 30 yard line. Ooh, bad snap. Molenkoff rolling out. He's gonna launch. Grant Yaden. Oh, bounced off the helmet in a flag. You can almost expect a PI there. There was a lot of grabbing there, no doubt. I am impressed that Molenkoff was able to, he picked that up from the ground at his toes and still had all the time he needed in the pocket. Yeah, that is a great job with the cast and offensive line. Although they haven't scored a lot, you can say that this offensive line is, is really doing a fantastic job protecting their quarterback. And that is a pass interference. I believe this will be a 15-yard penalty, if I remember correctly. Uh, 
That yeah, brings the ball up to the 16-yard line. 3.4 seconds to play. Got to be looking end zone again here. You got one play to get six. Three out wide. And they're going to run it here. Kyle Routabush, and that one will be short. Well, at the half, it's Pioneer 21, cast and zero. We'll be back for second half play here after halftime. You're watching Cast and Comets Pioneer Panthers football here on our evening. Not score. It's kind of the end of what Pioneer had last week. They failed on their first two drives. All right. Well, Cast and will receive to uh, start this second half. <clears throat> Grant Yaden and Jabez Yarber back to receive for the comments here. And this drizzle has just continued unabated. They're going to do an onside kick, but um, not really a chance for a Pioneer to recover that one. So comments start with tremendous field position. Almost at about the 50 yard line. So Comets have two out wide here on this first. Oh, bad snap. Over the head, Molenkopf just has to fall on it. Well, that's absolutely not the way you want to start. Man. Absolutely. Yep. And there goes that great field position. Yep. Ball slick, hand slick. Turf is slick, just not a good recipe when you're just trying to catch the football. See if Thomas can get some cooking here on second down. Just getting 10 or 11 yards would be a success here. Make it third manageable. Gavin Molenkoff rolling out. He's saying go for it. He checks it down. Yaden cutting up. Oh, we There's got a flag. flag. That one's looking like it's going to go to the house, but no guarantees. Yaden, he gets the touchdown, but there's a flag on the field. So Flag early in the play, clear back on the Comets, 40. Yeah, just as Grant Yaden exploded there, that's going to be an illegal receiver downfield. How disheartening for the Comets. So is that five repeat down? I'm not sure. I haven't seen a lot of them um, in my time commentating, but I do believe it's a loss. Yeah, I see the official gesturing for five yards. And it will be a repeat of the down, so. Uh, second and a county to go. Molenkoff passes out, finds Yaden. Yaden slips. And gives the defense time to catch up to him. That's this slick field once again, playing dividend in Comets uh, passing options here. <laughs> so that looks like we're at third and 25. Ball on the 32 yard line. They're going to do a double handoff. Kyle Radebush at the middle. Kyle Radebush gets into the chains. If he would have outran those two, he could have took that one all the way to the house. But nonetheless, a fantastic 
third down play there. And you got fourth and manageable here. These are the moments I was talking about. Comets have to stay aggressive here. They want to try to get back into this one. You almost got to think they got to go for it. Yeah, at this point, giving it away just almost seems like a loss, really. Molenkoff rolling out. Molenkoff. And he's going to be short. It's about a gain of one. Not a lot of options there. Thought he had some going off the field, but just not able to get there. Met short. That was a whole lot of jersey up around the neck bone, though. Absolutely, but as long as it doesn't get in those pads, it won't be a holding call. Comet's able to burn two and a half minutes off the clock. That possession. Quarterback rolling out wide. Rands finds him the toe tapper on the sideline. Great play design. That pass was on the money there. So Panthers staying aggressive here to start the third quarter. It's always interesting to see how uh, the team that's leading big going in the second half, um, how aggressive are they going to play? Are they going to try to play conservative? Are they going to step off the gas a little bit? But Panthers seeming to go pretty strong here. Hands up right up the middle. First down and more and out of bounds. <coughs> I mean, let's be honest, though. When you're already winning, you don't quit what you were doing that got you winning in the first place. I mean, that's... I, I hate to say that in the in favor of, of the visiting team. And that was a great stop there just ahead of the line of scrimmage by the Comets. <clears throat> but... It would, especially with as aggressive as the Comets into the first half and came into the second half, in spite of a slip up or two, <laughs> uh, yeah, the Panthers have to realize if they let off the gas, the Comets are going. Absolutely. Try to find a cut back out to the sidelines, but. Comets once again there. So before a short gain, third down. Just three on second down. Always been the workforce for Pioneer. I, I think they try to go to him again. Maybe or maybe try to roll out Rand once more. Right up the middle. He's going to move the chains. I see some Flag. flags. They're going to mark him short of the end zone, but nothing's in stone yet. We do have a flag on the field. And we got a holding call on the Panthers. Panthers. So, I'm not sure if that's a loss of five or ten, but they will repeat the down. Ten yard penalty, and they will repeat this third down. They pretty much, basically, they put it back in the same spot it was, Charlie. Okay. They did it from the spot of the foul. So the 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 ball place on the holding call comes from the the penalty come is assessed from the spot of the foul. Spot of the foul, not from the original line of scrimmage. Panther showing some speed here, but the ball does come out and out of bounds. So that's going to put him at about fourth and two or three. Fourth and two. 
<clears throat> Inside the red zone, Panthers would be foolish to not go for that one. Absolutely. Again, they need to keep their foot on the gas just as much as the Comets need to be as aggressive as possible. It's a QB option, and they're going to be met short. Comets waving their hands in the client motion. Looks like the Comets will take possession. They will. Turnover on down, so that's a big break and a great stop here for this Comets defense. Now hopefully the offensive side of the ball can get some turning. They are deep in their own backfield here. <clears throat> Just inside the 15-yard line, a very aggressive defense by the Panthers could uh, spell bad news for the Comets. But the Comets have had a couple of really big plays. Just unfortunately, they've been called back. Absolutely. From the Comets here, I'm going to try to get Jabez Yarber going again. You are down big, but at the same time, you have one and a half quarters ago. Ooh. Kyle Radebush able to pick up some positive yards there. But as I was saying, we just the Comets just had to find positive yards whenever they can get it. You got a quarter and just just over a quarter and a half to uh, get possibly just three scores up on the board and tie the game. Um, so you don't need a rush. You don't need to go pass, pass, pass. But at the same time, you want to make sure you're getting the best play for your guys and hopefully they can get something out of it. So they're trying to keep it keep it short game. Which has worked, and it's worked incrementally. Well, and the fact is, is that we've seen on the home game and a half that we've watched, Molenkov has no trouble putting it in the air. Absolutely. He's very confident when it comes to putting the ball um, up in the air and trying to get it to the receiver's hands. Route a bush maybe to pick up a yard or two. Out on the field now for the third and four. Yeah, it's another big, another big third down for Caston. <laughs> Longkopf's got to hurry and get his guys set. You got seven seconds to work with here. Yeah, do not need to delay a game call here. He's got to get that snap. There we go. He's looking for Yaden in a flag. Just assume the PI there, nothing That's really what I'm else. thinking, and that was, that's 15 yards, right? Yep. Although it was light, uh, you could see Grant Yaden's hands did get pulled down, not able to make a play on the ball. So, looks like they'll pace him off, and automatic first down for this Commons team. Line of scrimmage now at the Comets, 35. See if the Comets go through the air again. Do a handoff to Yarber here. Got good blocking up the field, Man. and Yarber slips. That slippery field has cost a lot of good plays on both sides of the ball here tonight. Absolutely, he's just trying to find a cutback lane. He had left side of the field uh, completely wide open, could have drove a dump truck through that. But um, unfortunate to see him slip there. We brought down short of where he wanted to go. Second and seven here. There's been enough water come down tonight that... Uh, Yarber. Oh, that's going to move the chains. Absolutely. Comets look like they're finally getting something to go. But I was saying there's been enough water come down tonight. It's a little sketchy going up and down the bleachers. So, yeah, it's no surprise to me that these players are having a hard time getting traction and going where they need to on the field. Uh huh. Well, credit where credit is earned, where credit is due. This offensive line has put together, quite frankly, um, very good performance here for this um, Comets offense. You saw multiple times back in um, 
the last half, Gavin Molenkoff had a fumble snap, and they were able to hold him off, particularly that one time when it was snapped at his knees. Grant Yaden deep, Gavin Molenkoff goes after him, and another flag comes out, and the Comets fans are ecstatic. That's the third P.I. Grant Yaden has been able to draw for this offense. I, uh, I can't imagine that the Panthers coaching staff is uh, real happy with the way their defense is handling these air plays. Absolutely. But at the same time, like you much rather take a 15-yard a penalty than, than allow a 30-yard touchdown. So Absolutely. From the Panthers, I'm not... I'm not overly mad about it because you are you are at least still leading by three scores, but they got to clean it up, especially in that secondary and safety position if they want to try to hold off this common squad. Yeah. And that said, we are underneath the five-minute mark here in the third. So realistically, you could pick up another 15 of those and still win the game. Oh, Offensive line punch out there quick, but the ball, wet as it is, just slips right through Rigney's hands. I, I play football without gloves and you know, like in, in rainy conditions. It's, it's tough. It's tough and not only to get floating, but also to hold on to the ball. All very important parts of the game. Here we go, Molenkoff from the gun. Hands it off to Yarber. We got a outside handoff Yarber and a flag is called. This might be another big Comets play brought back. Yarber frustrated it looks like. Got a holding against the Comets here. This is the most penalties I've ever seen. All right. So we're, we're on the same playing field there with that. Yeah. There, there's been a this drive has just been riddled with penalties on both sides of the ball. Sometimes when comments feel like they're going to get a massive gain, it gets called back. Uh, when Pioneer feels like they're going to get a big stop, it gets called back or move forward, depending on how you want to you want to look at it. But replay of second down here. Second and 10. Excuse me, second and 20. 10 yard loss there. Molenkoff again from the gun. He's back to throw. Grant Yaden out wide the lob and it's caught. Excuse me, dropped. Just slipped right out of his hands. Looked like he had it there for a second. Oh, yeah, I thought he came down with it. We've seen Grant Yaden pull in those seemingly impossible catches. He's able to get um, a hand on it, but there just slips right out. Could blame it on the rainy condition, but at the same time, that was just big loss there for the Comets. I just overheard elsewhere in the press box, this drive has had 65 yards worth of penalties on it. Yarber now gets blocking up field on third. About eight yards picked up on the play. So once again, fourth and long. Let's see if the Comets can get some rolling here. It's on the 38 yard line. Yeah, I see Coach Ulrich talking to Molenkoff, and, and as we've discussed, they've really got to go for it. <laughs> it's kind of like when you're when you're playing a game like, ooh, and Molenkoff goes down, or excuse me, Yarber goes down. When you're playing a game like. Euchre, for instance, you're not going to win if you keep playing defensively. Yeah, you know, I don't know if we've got to. Sometimes you you've got to win the bid, even if you're not sure. 
And, and that's what these fourth down attempts are. They're, they're taking the bid even when you're not quite sure that you're going to pull it down. Because at the end of the day, if you don't try, if you just play defensively the whole time, all you're going to do is just make it a smaller loss for yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. If the Comets want anything, um, they want a chance to get back in this game, they just got to keep staying aggressive. It does look like it's not paying out in the way they want it at times, but at the same time, uh, they keep their head down, keep on grinding. It will eventually pay off. Rands puts it in the air there and uh, goes well well ahead of the intended receiver. Great pass coverage there by the Comets. Second and 10, ball on the Panthers, 35. Now one thing I think I would be doing if I was Pioneer is using every second of the play clock available. Absolutely, that's one of the things that you see a lot of pro teams, especially and especially at the college level, just Football is um, heavily reliant on who has the ball for the longest time. You can see all the stats you want from all different age levels, and you most likely see the team that has the ball the longest is teams that ends up winning. So, yeah, absolutely. If Pioneer does take advantage of this play clock, they can eat away at this Comets chance to get the ball back. Well, that'll move the chains. Or... It's a fumble on the play, and it's going to stay Pioneer ball. Pioneer gets a big break there in retaining their possession. Everything out there is slippery by this point. Absolutely. Even even parts of the uniform, their pads, their, their hands, their yeah. helmets, everything's holding no traction, and we've seen it multiple times. Uh, the field is unforgiving in these circumstances, seems like. And looking up into the lights, it is still just kind of drizzling off and on. Good tackle there by the Comets. Loss of yards there. Well, loss of a yard. Second and 11. 2.30 left here in this third quarter. Like I said, like I will reference in the post game show, these are very unofficial stats on my end. So, yeah. But you do a great job to stay right on top of it, Skyler. I appreciate it. Uh, the folks at home appreciate it as well. So, Rand's under center, hands the ball off to Toloza. Inside handoff, and how about that tackle from Grant Yaden? He's blown up place pretty much behind the line of scrimmage, and that one was no different. Huge hit as well. Yeah, gain of a yard just back up to the original line of scrimmage, now third and 10. But once again, be interesting to see how Pioneer will play these fourth downs if it does come upon him. Quarterback rolling out wide. Right, we saw this play before. And brought down for a gain of five. So, Blair, if you are a pioneer, what are you doing here? Are you going to try to punt it and pin them deep? Or are you going to try to go for it and extend this uh, possession of the ball? I think I'm going to extend the possession. Uh, Pioneer's been, been able to do five or more yards on more possessions than not. Even if they turn it over... Uh, they're turning it over in the Commons backfield. And we're under a minute left in the third. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but that's a big tackle there. Levi Martin. Running him down and tackling him well into Panthers territory and turning over on downs there. Once again, these Comet defensive ends have just exploded out of the right tackle and the left tackle sides and be able to blow up plays behind the line of scrimmage. We saw earlier with Grant Yaden twice, uh, one occurring on that drive and just Levi Martin taking matters into his own hands and paying him deep. Comets now first and 10 with the ball on the Panthers 49. 
I guess it wasn't quite as well into Panthers territory as I thought. I was just looking at where Levi Martin ended up stopping a slide. <laughs> And Coach Ulrich will use his first time out this half. We're going to step away and thank our sponsors. Come back, watch us wrap up the third quarter. You're watching Comets Panthers football here on RTC. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Just under 50 seconds left here in the third. Comets with a fresh set of downs on the Panthers 49. Molenkoff back to throw. Ah, oh, blitz. Grant Yaden had that one in his fingertips. Lost his footing as he went to cut for that pass route. That's another one of those common out routes. We've seen it time and time again. They've always appeared to be open, but at the same time, when you see out routes get open, most of the time is those linebackers are just sucking in towards the quarterback, forcing pressure, and most of the times those passes don't connect because of that. Playmakers, at least. I, I, I've been seeing... 45 seconds left here in the third. Jabez Yarber handing off. He'll pick up a couple yards. Third and eight now. 30 seconds left. Uh, I think if I'm the Comets, I there's there's a. Less time on the game than the play. I think I, I let go ahead and let it go into the fourth. What about you? It really does depend on how, how they want to play us. You can almost use this time as an extra timeout to your disposable to your disposal, but it looks like they're gonna try to try to get this one off here. Well you don't want to see this one as a free play if you choose, but they ain't gonna get it off. All right, and at the end of three, it's still Pioneer 21, cast and zero. We'll come back for the fourth quarter after this word from our sponsors. You're watching Comets Panthers football here on RTC TV. Comets still third and eight. Golenkoff looking to keep it. Positive gain, but... Came in too hot, and now receiving some medical attention. And I think he just lost his balance and couldn't slow down. It's true. Oh, and we're going to have an official timeout after that tackle attempt. Uh, looks like the Comets defender ended up sliding into the water table here on the Comets sideline. He looks uh, okay. He's up and under his own power. He's, uh, I think, a little bit more moist than he was when he <laughs> started that play. All right, Comets now are fourth and looks like about three. And to answer the question you're thinking, if I'm the Comets, I'm going for it. Yeah. All night long. We've got 12 more minutes, everything left on the field. Yeah, absolutely. If you're gonna if you're gonna give it back, it almost seems like you're losing five five minutes of the play clock seemingly. Uh, so if you're time, if you're the comments, you're down by three scores, not even a full quarter left to play. You gotta go pedal to the metal here, trying to get six. Molenkoff back, jump pass, Rigney. Into coverage, I thought that was going to complete, and we will turn over on downs there. The O-line kind of, they let one defender through, and uh, Molenkoff ended up with a little bit more pressure than what he thought he was going to have there in the pocket. Pioneer will take over at their own 41 and a half. <laughs> and there again, if I'm the Panthers, I'm, use, I'm, I'm not taking that snap unless I'm under five seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Milk the clock is going to be uh, possibly the game plan for this entire fourth quarter for the Panthers. Limit 
uh, Caston's offensive possessions. And how about that for a cutback? Rams will back more. put another 10 on the board. Clutch tackle there by Levi Martin. Had a sellout for that one. Rands keeps it, moves the chains way downfield. And that's exactly what my thought process if I'm the Panthers is. We don't take the snap until we're under five, but once we've got the snap, we go hard. Absolutely. Rand's biggest play of the game so far. Because if I'm the Panthers, I absolutely want to just, you know, I, I want to, even if it's just the last three or four minutes, I want to I want to take it to a running clock. Uh, you know, that's, that's just, that's the mentality coming in. And the Panthers will use their first time out of the game. So we're going to step away. We're going to thank our sponsors. We'll be back. This is Caston Pioneer Football here on RTC. And welcome back. Just as Pioneer puts the ball in the air and pass incomplete. Wide open receiver running the out route. That one just fell right through his hands. Absolutely beautiful spiral through the air. Beautiful route, but just not able to connect. This wet field is really making big plays pretty much impossible for both sides. Nice pass. Yeah, he's still the past two weeks. He's shown some nice touch on passes. He showed, showed it there. His, his guy just got to come up with it. That's as simple as that. Once again, great clock management by the Panthers. Up the middle, stopped hard by the Comets. Kyle Radebush, big hitter for the Comets. Panthers sitting now at about third and eight on the Comets 29 yard line. Comets looking at a blitz right here. Quarterback keeper option. He's going to try to keep it. He's going to cut up field. He will move the chains. Absolutely. Stop short. Inside the five, it looks like. Hard to see from our angle. But nonetheless, a huge run there by Rands, picking up the first down. And another red zone trip for this Panthers offense. Ball is on the four yard line. First and goal. So Rands at 50 plus yards rushing just on this drive. Got a sweep to the inside. And that will be six more on the board. Touchdown, Panthers. Hate to see it as a Comets fan. Love to see it as a, just a fan of, of winning, of, of success in the world. You keep your foot on the gas and you keep doing what's what brought you to winning so far. And that's another PAT for the Panthers. And that will put the score at Pioneer 28, Caston 0. Comets really at least want to break the goose egg before the before the end of the game. We're going to step away and thank our sponsors. Ten more minutes to play in this Cast and Pioneer game here on RTC TV4. Yeah, it sounds like we're going to be offsides on the kick team. That's a front. Just been a lot of penalty yards this game. Yeah, hard to get a grip on every, hard to get a grip on anything. The ball, the field, uh, other opponents, but and it's just hard to play clean football, especially in the element. 
Pioneer here to send it away for the second time. Kick to the middle, good catch there. Noah Hurd is one who received that one. He decides to kneel it down. Noah Hurd brings it up to nearly the Comets 40. And uh, Comets go to set of downs. Well, we'll happily take a series with a couple of PIs. Now, I do have to say, in the words of clock management, if I'm the Comets, I use as little of the play clock as I can. Yeah. Deep pass. Gavin Molenkoff going deep, and that one's over overshot. Overthrown. Love the aggressiveness, but just nothing to show for right there. It really speaks to the difference in defense between West Central and Pioneer. Uh, because in that West Central game, Molenkoff threaded the needle multiple times. He's had several great passes tonight, uh, but he's not been able to thread the needle in this defense the same way he did against West Central. Uh, yeah, if you look at both defense, I remember the, the West Central game, they played their defense out more towards the sidelines compared to Pioneer. They like to play their defense uh, up towards uh, between the hash marks. And you saw during the West Central game, Gavin Molenkoff completed a whole bunch of throws. Oh, pick. Hopefully not pick six. Oh, he's still going. He's still up. Brought back down at the 45-yard line. That is, that is the unfortunate risk of putting the ball in the air. Uh-huh. That goes back to what I was saying. We saw the West Central game. They played their defense out to the side, so the middles was open. Uh, but Pioneer, they played theirs more towards the the inside, so their outsides are open. Molenkoff throws one inside there and just not the right outcome there for the Comets. And this possession could be the fruition of what I said if I'm Pioneer, my strategy is. They visit the end zone one more time, get the PAT. That will take this game to a running clock until the finale. It's a road test, you know. Yeah, three game road test. Quarterback rollout. Loses his footing. He decides to bring it down. And he will move the chains. I have to applaud. That is the a definition making something out of nothing right there. Lost his footing and managed to get back upright and then go far enough to move the chains. Um, Rands has on more than one occasion tonight just taken matters into his own hands and made the play, moved the chains almost every time he's done so. Absolutely. His improv tonight has been quite quite literally perfect. I don't think I've seen a time when he's assumed wrong or done something out of the norm that just didn't turn in the positive yardage. Looks like, uh, speaking of positive yardage, probably a pickup of four or five here, maybe a bit more. Noah Hurd there with his tackle. Pioneer once again knocking at the door of the Comets red zone. Pioneer just outside of this Comets end zone. Hand off, cut up. Kyle Rodebush with another tackle. Excuse me, that was Landon Rigney, the, Landon Rigney, the freshman. 
tackle, though, did allow the chains to move. Ball now inside the Comets red zone. Another red zone entry here for the Panthers. so far for Pioneer. It's been much, much better play by the Panthers in this fourth quarter. First and 10 inside the red zone. Up Cut back middle. Hill. Cuts back again. And, and he's going to get in. So many broken tackles there. That was... Started going right. Cut back left. Comet's coming up left, so he cuts back even harder and seemingly walks his way into the end zone. So with that six-pointer right there, we're going to have a running clock for the rest of this one if this PAT goes. Well, they haven't missed one yet tonight. Snap the hold, and it's up and through. And there's our running clock. Good kick there, fielded by Yarber. Heads toward the right side, tries to find a cutback lane. Following his blockers, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds towards the Comet sideline. And the Comets really have very little opportunity to use play clock if they want an opportunity to not to not end the game on a complete shutout here tonight. Seven minutes, and with a running clock, it's going to go fast. Uh -huh. if, you're, if you're the comments here, you just want to keep trying to play 100% 100, 100 as long as you can. I mean, it hasn't been your night um, down by five scores. Um but you got to finish this one out. And Yarber's going to lose a couple yards on that carry. Comet second and 12, ball on their own 37. Here we go, Mollenkoff from the gun. Dropping back to throw, so there's a flat route to Yaden. Yaden makes a man miss. Yaden cutting up. He'll move the chains. Down at around the 43, I'm going to assume. Again, if I'm the comments, man, I'm I'm just running a hurry up offense here. They're they're using they're using a lot more play clock than what I would expect them to. Kyle Radebush, gain of round five. Second and five upcoming. Ball is on the 39. And already two of those minutes gone. Yep, just over five minutes. Yarber. Outruns a man, gets blocking upfield. Yarber cuts back inside the 10. Great play there by Yarber. Absolutely. We saw on the left side of the field, you had, I believe, three or four guys in blocking position. Collins just run the complete opposite direction. Uh, Panthers didn't quite see that one coming. Turned into a lot of positive yardage here for this Comets team. Comets with only their second or third red zone visit of the night. Uh, full set of downs here on the Panthers 10 yard line. 
Back to throw. Route of Bush. And, and he'll make it. it. That breaks the near fourth quarter long goose egg and great play design, the flat route. Send the blockers out wide. And Kyle Ryderbush takes it across the, the end zone marker and scores six. Levi Martin looking like he was limping towards the sideline. Coach is sending him back out. 340 to uh, 340 to play. Again, that running clock goes away quickly. Grant Yaden, the holder. Molenkoff. And that one is wide. Moving. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Comets lining up for only their second kickoff of the night, their first since starting the game. But, Gage, I have to say... I think that there's something to be said for the fight that these comments still have in them. And this isn't a situation like we've seen in years past where it's like, oh, yeah, we were able to score against the Pioneer after they put in their JV. Pioneer's still running their front line. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the comments were able. Now, did it, <laughs> did it take nearly to the final buzzer? Sure, it did. It did. But they've been fighting hard all night. And honestly, they've had... Two huge plays called back on flagged. Uh, and I, without those, we'd be looking at multiple scores from the comments on the scoreboard. On the other hand, we'd be seeing a higher Pioneer score if it weren't for several yards, several tens of yards given up due to penalties by Pioneer, too. I mean, it just... Nobody's played a perfect game tonight, in large part because of the copious amounts of water on the field. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. This Comets team has uh, displayed quite a inspiring, if you say, a amount of grit and determination, just trying to break the threshold of a score, and they just keep on fighting. We're going to have a timeout here uh, by the Pioneer Panthers. But as I was saying, they they just keep on fighting, and it's, it's really nice to see, especially a team, that no matter how how far they're down, how far back they are, even with the running clock, they're still going 110. They're still going 100 miles per hour until they can't, until that uh, final snap is played. And it's it's good to see. It's something to build off of them. You can't you can't teach effort. You can't teach grit. You can't teach determination. And you can see. Uh, the way these comments play, they, they have all three of those factors. Absolutely. And with a freshman in the gun, I mean, that, that says good things about uh, casting comments football in the upcoming years. And especially looking at the eighth grade team that will be coming up next year, got a lot of size in those eighth graders. Uh, a couple of them are, are already men among boys, as I see them in the weight room. So... Uh, I'm excited for Comets football in these next several years. Um, and looking at this, uh, Pioneer using only their second timeout of the game. I think that the strategy here is going to be uh, run out this timeout, let the play clock run down, use another one. And so basically they're going to get another 60 seconds off the clock before they ever uh, make a play. And then they're only going to have to, they might even just take, They've got four downs. They might let the play clock run out and take a couple knees and just end this game here tonight. <clears throat> yeah, if you're the comments, there's really no no reason to burn your last two timeouts because even with the running clock, um, it's going to be hard to come back and score yeah. X amount of touchdowns in two minutes. Well, that look at me being wrong. Uh, ball carrier nearly makes it to the other chain. This is far from the, oh, they're saying that they made it. Well, that's a new, uh, another set of downs. At this point, if I'm the coaches, I'm almost, I would think I'm almost looking at just making sure none of my players get injured tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's always sad to see. You see it at um, college and um, pro basketball when games are already won. You see a guy go down. It's just, it's just sad to see. Um, looks like they are in knee formation here, so hopefully we won't be seeing any of that tonight. And, and there's that. 
Did they get the timeout called? Or did we get a delay a game call? I think they're just going to let this one play out. Terrific start for the Panthers. The lone loss is to a very good Laville team that you won't have to. I believe Laville's not 1A, correct? Or 2A. So that's not a team that you have to look at down the line. Well, yeah, looks like they are definitely just going to burn up downs, burn up the clock. Uh, I feel pretty confident in calling 35 to 6 our final score here tonight. Uh, unfortunately, not quite. Not quite the outcome that the Comets fans were looking for. Again, coming into it, I knew that uh, Pioneer was coming in with a 2-1 and one record. Comets were coming in with an 0-3 record. Uh, I, I didn't expect necessarily an upset here tonight, um, but I did think that the Comets would make it to the end zone at least one more time than they did. So, again, though, well fought by both sides all night long. Uh, a lot of highlights and some lows here tonight, you know. Um, obviously, I'm sure that, that pick is going to be something that's talked about as uh, they watch film tomorrow and start looking ahead. Uh, but your final score here tonight from the Comet Crater, Pioneer 35, Comets 6. Uh, so want to wish everybody good night. want to thank Carson for braving the chill and the rain all night long, swinging camera for us. And uh, obviously, thank you to you, Gage. I uh, always appreciate the commentary you bring to our football broadcasts. Uh, so uh, for, with that, for RTC TV4, I'm Blair Zimmerman. And I'm Gage Thomas. And we're wishing you good night.